specifically talking about the ball side positions, the field zones, and the help side. Um, not many of you would have heard about the help side. Um, if you have, you can maybe, has anyone heard about the help side? You can give it a bit of a nod. So I'm gonna just see if I can see you. Help side, yes, no, sorry, just give a nod again. Yeah, a few people, okay, awesome. Um, that's cool, so we're gonna be going along. We'll start with the ball start positions um, and the risks and responsibilities of the players uh, within the ball start position. Um, all right, ball start position. We have four start ball positions on the field. Um, ball start naught, which is inside the D. Let's see. All right, which is our D uh, or our circle. Ball start one, uh, which is just above the, uh, just outside the circle below the 23 yard line. Ball start two is in the second half, still in our half. Ball start three is in the opponent's half going towards their circle. And ball start four is, sorry, I'm just gonna move this thing. Uh, ball start four is the opponent's 25 and then you have the opponent's circle. Um, there is the amount of risk that each player or the amount of risk that there is on the field um, varies on the field. Um, and just from, to get a, get a good start, can anyone take a guess at the ball start naught? How much risk would there be in that area of the field? If we have the ball and we are scoring at the top of the page, so towards the top of the goals near ball start four, we have the ball in ball start naught. How much risk is on the field at that time? If anyone wants to answer that. So I think if you have a computer, if you hold down spacebar, you can temporarily unmute yourself to answer. Just give that a go quickly. Ronald, do you want to try that quick? No, it's still not working. Oh, yeah. Yeah, now you should hear me. Okay, so if anyone wants to answer, uh, you just hold down spacebar and, and that'll just quickly temporarily unmute yourself to... To, to give an answer. And there's no wrong answers. Okay. And, and there's no wrong answers at this. We, we're all learning. Okay, ball start naught. All right, I'm gonna give you the first one. Answer, all right. So the amount of risk that we have in ball start one, uh, in ball start naught, okay, very high risk. All right, the ball is in our own circle. Okay, these are our goals that we are protecting. So we obviously have a lot of risk in that space. We don't want to lose the ball. Uh, ball start one. Okay, now I'm really going to ask someone, I might pick on someone to, uh, to answer. Uh, ball start one, how much risk do we have in ball start one? We have high risk. There we go. Okay, high risk. All right, so we start getting a bit a little bit less than what there is in the circle, but obviously still high risk because the ball is in our own half. Ball start two. What do we have now? Like a sort of high risk. I mean, not like that big. I mean, like it's still big high risk, but it's less than one. Yep, that's exactly it. Sorry, I'm trying to see who that was. Uh, who just spoke? It's Abby. I don't know why. I don't know how to change my name. It's just like that. So I'll change it after though. But no problem. I don't know Thank you, Abby. I'm just trying to find it because mine's not showing who's speaking. So it's cool. Um, yeah, fantastic. That is 100% correct. Um, it is definitely medium to high risk. All right. So that means that we're still in our own half. Um, so there's a little bit less risk because we, we don't have, if we lose the ball, we're still in our own half. So that's quite risky but it's still getting further away from our goals. Uh, if we move over to ball start three, uh, obviously we are going to get even less risk. Okay, so now we're in the opponent's half. So just to give you the answers, medium to low risk. Okay, because now we're moving along, we're in their half. Ball start four, all right. As you can see, color coded for you guys, it's pretty cool. Um, ball start four, low risk. Okay, um, and this is where that we have 
different responsibilities for each player. So I'm going to show you a video clip coming up. Um, and what I want you to see in this video clip is I want you to see the type of play and the way the players play in each zone of the field. All right, so, so try and see where the, the, where the ball is in which zone and see how they, the style of hockey that they play in each zone. All right, so here's the, here's the clip. Okay, so ball start, we're going to ball start one. Okay, so what, uh, what trends do we notice from this? Starting, starting all the way at the back, um, when, we, when we watch this first clip over here, what sort of hockey did we start seeing them play? Or, or what, what do we see from the, the players? Transferring. Transferring, okay. And, and with the transferring, what do, we, what do we notice about it? They're like fairly controlled passes. Okay, 100% passes. Yeah, 100%. That's uh, completely right. So the passes are 100%. They're very safe passes. All right, they, they're on the, on the ground, nice and firm. Um, but there's very little risk taken from the players. Okay, so there's a, there's a trend that you'll start to notice with, these, with, with each zone. So as we, if there is very high risk, okay, the players try and play as, as little risk as possible. So in the first, first clip we have here, the ball is, gets transferred between the players at the back, but with very little risk. The minute there's any threat, it gets passed back. Even there, there was a lot of pressure being taken. Uh, the, the defender was under a lot of pressure, but it was a very low risk pass, uh, early enough to get away from the, the attacker. So there wasn't anything to worry about. Um, no risk taken. As we move on towards uh, ball start three, so here we go. We are now in ball start four. What do you? What is the trend that we have here? What do you think the players start to do? They're trying to play into space. Yeah, hundred percent. What else? Let the play play a clip a bit. Okay, so ball start three. All right, still controlled. However, this, this pass here, I want you to watch this pass here. Okay. As soon as we start getting higher up in the field, the players start getting a little bit more creative. All right, they start having the ability uh, to, to take a little bit more risk. Because the ball is in the opposition's half, if they had to lose the ball in, in this area of the field, there's no direct threat at goal. All right, so they're allowed to take a little bit more risk. They're allowed to play the ball into space. Um, like you said, that's 100% correct uh, because we want to start creating opportunities to go towards the goal. So a little bit more risk. Uh, if we lose the ball, it's okay. So here's, this is a really good example of each zone, each ball start position and the way that we should play in each position. Oopsie, I'm going to go back one. Excuse me. Okay, there we go. All right, so watch the team in red, England. Ball start one. All right, we have the ball under control 100%. All right, they take very little risk. There's quite a few uh, Irish players around. Okay, so the players in green, they they very much inside their, uh, inside the 25, but they take very little, oh, excuse me. This mouse is not working for me. Okay, very little, uh, very little risk taken from each player. Okay, 100% passes out the back, number 26. All right, she's in ball start three. All right, we've said to the players, you're allowed to take a little bit more risk once you get higher up in the field. So she creates an awesome move to create space for herself. Big inside pull. 
been higher up in the field, we start taking some more risk. Okay, so just to give you that uh, breakdown, ball start north, there's very high risks. So we want to take as little risk as possible. We want to protect the ball, right? Keep possession, walk the ball into zone one or three. All right, so now zone one or three, we'll discuss a little bit later, but that basically means to the side of the field. All right, zone one and zone three. Zone one is on the left-hand side of the field. Zone three is on the right-hand side of the field. Um, and then 100% safe passes. We don't want to take any risk on the passes um, that we don't have to. All right, as we move up, ball start one. This is where a lot of the outletting happens. Okay, so defenders, you'll make sure that you'll find yourselves in these positions. All right, so you'll recognize that you, this is where we outlet, where we transfer the ball a lot. Uh, so we want to make sure that we, have that good realignment, that good setup, so that it's easy for our players to pass to one another. And obviously we want to accelerate the play and move the ball forward to get the ball out of those high risk zones. All right, so we want to get it into the medium risk and higher up in the field. Ball start two, all right, the ball is still in our own half. So we need to still be wary and be careful of the risk that we take. We want to make sure that it's still a little bit less, uh, less risky all right, we don't want to make any silly mistakes there because the ball is in our own half. Um, and we still want to look to move that ball forward and get the ball into the opposite, opposition half. Um, this is when you're really going to start accelerating the play. Like we saw in the clip uh, previously with that player, that number 26, as she got the ball into that ball start three, that's when she exploded forward. All right, she bet a nice big inside pull, created the space, and within two passes, they were right on the baseline. Uh, in the attacking uh, 23. Um, and then obviously once the ball gets into that ball start four and the opposing circle, uh, that's when they can really look to create opportunities. They can take risk where they have to, like that back stick, uh, that, that ball past the far post. Uh, really nice ball that was, it, I mean, you know, if they, lo they lost the ball technically, but it's a, it's a good amount of risk because it's a good opportunity that they can take. Um, and obviously, we want to get our players getting into good areas and to receive those balls. So if a player was better positioned on far post there, that would have been a really awesome opportunity to score a goal. Uh, all right. So, yeah, just again, I want you to look at this clip again, um, just because it is that good. And just watch each player the way they are in that motion. All right. So at the back. 100% safe. They don't try to take on the players. Make sure 100% passes. All right, we get the ball out of the back safely. All right, and then just over there, I'm going to go back a little bit. We spoke about how the players look at good realignment. Okay, so as the ball gets taken up, I want you to watch again this player over here. Can everybody see my cursor? If I uh, just nod if you can see it. Fantastic. I would like you to watch this player and watch her movement. Okay, so she starts in the middle of the field. All right. As the ball gets played out, safe passes, 100% safe. All right, here we go. She starts to pull out to create space on the side of the field. All right. 25, close to their circle. Now we can take the risks. Okay, if we have to take risks and we want to take risks, this is where we can because we're close to, the, close to the circle. All right, still keeping the ball, taking a little bit more risk, trying to get the ball in. Boom, okay. And then we spoke about the, far, the, the good positions. Uh, forwards, what, what positions can we, uh, when, I, when I was talking about good positions in the attacking circle or the opposing circle, what do I mean? What are those positions? Uh, penalty spot, rebound, and guard. Okay, penalty spot, definitely. Rebound, yep. So we're going to be making sure that the players that are within the circle are expecting the rebound. Okay, so good body position. There is another one. Um, rebound. At Far post. Be. Yep, there we go. And there's technically two more in this situation. For this clip specifically, there's probably only one. Uh, that's missing, and that's somewhere around here. All right. Top uh, of the D. Yeah, top of the circle. All right, so we should be, be getting someone at the top of the circle if I go back slightly and 
have a look at where the players are lining up. Okay, so we talk about good position. There is someone that is around P spot. Okay, that player at the back, I would say she's going more towards the far post. All right, and if we had someone at top D, that would be even better. All right, in that space over there, uh, that if any shot is taken and that rebound comes out, she could be ready for it or looking for an extra pass in the D. Um, so as it plays, that player that is now at the back there, you can see she's going towards the far post. All right. Unfortunately, she just misses it with the keeper diving across. Uh, but yeah, it would have been a really, really good tip in if that, that happened. All right. Um, moving on. Okay. So obviously we've spoken now about attacking with the ball. The opposite of that, defending. All right, so when we lose the ball, if we lose the ball, um, there is obviously roles and responsibilities that each player needs to take. All right. If we are losing the ball in ball start four, all right, so now that is higher up in the field. Okay, that is in the close to the opposition circle. What, uh, I've given you a little bit of a, a clue there. What responsibility would we want to look at from the forwards? What, what is your role as forwards in that area? Uh, aggressive play. Aggressive, okay. Aggressive to, to which, in which direction? Uh, like going, going to their net. Okay, so towards the ball. Yeah. Okay, 100%. Um, so, yep, to apply pressure towards the ball, that would be pretty, pretty much prize number one or responsibility number one for the forwards, right? So once the ball is lost, okay, the forwards need to be applying pressure towards the ball, all right, and force the opponents. We want to try and force the opponent, opponents to pass those high risky pass, all right? We, we don't want them to be able to get comfortable and play the safe pass. We want to apply pressure so that they're forced to play those risky passes into areas that we want the ball to be in. Um, as the ball gets lower down, so now in ball start three, what do we think the, the roles would be now? Now we've obviously got forwards involved. We've also got midfielders or links involved. All right, so what are those responsibilities now? Let's see if I can pick on someone here. Uh, is that? Delia. Delia? Uh, Catherine can unmute herself. Okay. Uh, anyone that can unmute themselves or in the chat? We're in ball start three. Like what close do want? down the middle of the field to like force them on the sides. Yes. Okay. Who was that? Audrey. Audrey, well done, Audrey. Sorry, it's not popping up. I can't see who's speaking. But uh, yeah, Audrey, that was fantastic. Um, that's exactly what we want to do. So we want to start breaking down play. Okay, so we want to get, uh, still we want to apply pressure towards the ball, look to, to uh, force them out wide. Okay, um, but we really want them to not be able to regain structure. Okay, so once the ball is going out wide, we want the ball to either stay out, stay out wide um, and not come down the middle of the field. We're also looking to, to try and create or to, to look for interception, okay, to play the interception, to look for the interception of the pass rather than trying to tackle. Why don't we want to tackle in this area of the, of the field? We don't want to make tackles here or go for a tackle. Why is that? Uh, because if you go for the ball and you commit too much, then they can completely el eliminate you. Yep, 100%. Okay, so if you are uh, taking on the, the player and you try to dive in too much or try and go for the tackle and you're eliminated, that means you, the, the opposition now has an advantage because they are your player up. All right, so we need to make sure that we're not trying to go for the tackle. We're just trying to get the ball from an interception, so looking to intercept the pass. That means we then can go forward with the ball. So, yep, not trying to dive in, making sure we're taking 
uh, taking our time looking for the interception, but not allowing them to gain structure. Once the ball starts getting into our own half, this is when we need to get slightly more aggressive in terms of trying to break the game down or slow the game down so that the ball doesn't get into our own 25 too quickly. All right, we want to slow the game down and allow our, the rest of our players, um, if it's forwards or links that have been beaten, let them get all the way back uh, and be able to defend nicely from behind the ball uh, rather than backtracking and trying to back tackle um, unnecessarily. Um, we're also going to move into a man-to-man -man marking system. Uh, everyone understand man-to-man -man marking? Just nod if you do. All right, so we want to get close to our players, make sure that we're not too far apart. We, each player should be picking up their, their op, uh, op, opposite number. Um, we want to look to break down that play. And obviously, here especially is, uh, like the last person just said, stay away from the middle of the field. Okay, so we want to keep the ball out of zone two, which is the middle of the field. Um, keep it nice and wide, all right? Um, once we start moving down, so the ball start one now, this is where we really need to apply pressure and make sure that we aren't diving again. Don't, we don't want to get eliminated in this part of the field because this is where the scoring opportunities can come from. Right, so we don't want to dive. We just want to keep, make sure that they apply pressure. We want to defend the circle as much as possible. All right, so um, defenders, would you rather make a tackle inside the circle or outside the circle? Where are my defenders? Um, outside the D? Yep, very good. Okay, outside the circle, um, 100%. We need to make sure that sure, we... Christine, oh, thanks, Christine. I saw your message now. Um, yep, outside the circle, definitely, uh, because that will that will make it very difficult for the defenders to get in. And obviously we run less risk of giving the ball away or giving a penalty corner away because of hitting our foot or a bad tackle or whatever the case may be. So we want to deny that opportunity, all right, for the opponents, keep them outside the circle. And here we also start looking into getting into counter-attack ready. Okay. Counter-attack ready is used when, obviously as forwards, how often do we find ourselves in the ball start one or ball start naught. Okay, if we've lost the ball higher up in the field and the ball moves quickly all the way down, okay, not often are we able to get all the way back or we don't have to get all the way back. We can also become counter-attack ready, which means getting into a position that if and when we win the ball in ball start one and naught, we are then looking to get the ball to go forward. All right, so, as forwards, we shouldn't be going, good luck defenders, it's now your job. We should be saying, what can I do to help when we get the ball? All right, so make sure that we just get, look to the, which space we want to receive the ball in. Often that is nice and wide. Okay, so def uh, forwards, when I, any team that I coach, I always look to say, try and get at least one forward on either corner of the halfway line. Okay, so where the sideline meets the halfway line, on that side and that side, all right, that'll make sure that there is always a, uh, a player ready for the counter attack. Okay, so as the counter attack happens, we can pass the ball out wide to one of our forwards and we can go. All right, now getting all the way back into our circle, ball start naught. Okay, so it's in our D. This is really, really the crux. This is the last chance we have at really defending a goal. All right. Man-to-man -man marking is non-negotiable. We should be marking our players man and close, as close as we possibly can get man-to-man. -man. All right, we're defending the goal at all costs. Uh, if there's a shot being taken, if there is someone running towards the goal, we try and get in front of them, break them down as much as we can. Um, low body position, all right, to so make sure that we, our sticks are nice and low to the ground, protecting our feet, all right. Again, we speak about counter-attack ready, this also includes links at the moment, okay? So not only defenders, sometimes if the ball is on the right-hand side or the left-hand side, the opposite link needs to get it, uh, get counter-attack ready. Um, and obviously, like you can see on that last point here, when you have won the ball, don't panic, okay? Often players, when they receive the ball in the circle, 
they panic and they just try and hit the ball anywhere. All right. It is very, very uh, crucial that you don't try and hit the ball away. You are in control. Get the ball wide. Look to play into zone one or three. Okay, like we'll we'll discuss a little bit later, but out wide. So either on the left hand side of the field or the right hand side, rather than trying to go back up the middle of the field. Okay, keep the ball nice and wide. Make sure you don't panic. Okay, uh, this clip that you're going to watch now, uh, I want you to watch the red. Okay, Great Britain. They in red. They're playing against Netherlands. Naomi Van Ass has broken through the middle of the field, um, and she's heading straight towards goals. Um, and I want you to watch the, how, the, how the British defend uh, Naomi Van Ass and, and what positions they're getting to. So take a, take a quick look at these again. Okay, so we're looking at ball starts at uh, 2, 1, and naught. Okay, so the objectives from the defender should be to slow the game down. All right, they want to move to man-to-man -man marking. They want to look to break down play if they can or if they have to. Uh, they definitely want to keep the player out of the middle of the field, out of zone two. Uh, they want to defend the circle. They want to deny any opportunities for their opponents. Uh, they want to look to get counter attack ready. And then obviously once they're in the circle, lower body positioning. Uh, and also if they don't, if they don't panic. All right. So let's have a look at that clip. So first, uh, first goal or, or first principle for, from the defenders in this zone is what? What do the defenders want to try and make sure we doesn't happen in this part of the field. Wait, are you talking about the red team? Yes. So the red team is the defenders and they are defending the team in black, Netherlands. So what, what do the red team players want to try and stop this player from doing? They want to stop her from like getting further into the D so they have to like tackle her or get the ball sooner so she doesn't get into the more like dangerous spot of the field. Okay, so yeah, dangerous spot of the field being the middle of the field. So we want to try and keep her out of the middle of the field. All right, she does really well. Uh, Naomi Van Ass, number one player in the world, uh, one of the number one players in the world, to, to pass the ball early. She got the ball into the middle of the field. She passes early. But here we go. We've just said that we want to keep the ball out of the middle of the field. Watch these two players over here, how they condense themselves into the middle and deny this player who's going to receive the ball from entering the D. All right. She knows that she can't go forward, right? So she has to pass the ball out wide. She knows she can't turn. She's seen that there's a player over here and over there. And she wants to make sure that... Sorry, I just want to see that. There we go. Um, so that she's not going. So she passes the ball out wide. All right. Now we are in ball start one. Okay. The ball is in our own 25. We have said defenders should be doing what? How should they be marking? Man to man marking. Okay. Man to man marking. So start watching the players in the circle. Nice and close. Nice and close. Nice and close. This player over here is having a look at what that player is doing. Okay. The rest of the, the players, they are going to try and do what? Uh, move to the zone one and zone three. Correct. Okay. So at the moment, they are in zone three, if we're talking about the red team. Okay. So they are in zone three. So they want to try and keep them in zone three. They want to also apply pressure, but they don't want to dive into tackles. Okay, they don't want to try and win the ball and then get beaten. So watch as the ball gets closer. All right, they start applying pressure. Look again, man to man within the D. All right, there's good. There's a player on far post that's being marked. P spot is being marked, and these two players are being marked. You can see how she's watching her. Okay, having a look as the ball goes in. Not panicking, not diving, just putting pressure on, okay? Now we start to see that the ball's threatening towards the circle. This player starts to apply more pressure and tries to deny uh, Naomi Van Ass from going towards the circle. Oh, goodness. Okay, we're going to just play, play from here. Okay, so ball comes out. 
All right, tries to deny her, and there we go. The tackle was made on the top of the D, all right? But look where she steps from. Okay, so the player was close to the D, all right, to the circle. She steps out to make the tackle, all right? She didn't wait till the player got towards the circle. She stepped out. Once the player won the ball, all right, she is now making sure that she's not panicking. Okay, she didn't try and hit the ball all the way upfield. Uh, to release pressure or she just kept kept position, kept the ball on her stick, all right, and waited for her other players to support her, all right, once she came in again, all right, so it's gone from a complete counter-attack to Great Britain winning the ball and being able to now settle down and form a structure again. Okay, this clip is very much, well, actually, you tell me what happened in this clip. Okay, well, what happened? I'll play it again. Uh, the, the team in uh, green and yellow is Australia and obviously the orange is Netherlands. They are taking a 16 out of the back. Uh, number 22, oopsie, I'm gonna go back one. Number 22 has Quite a few options. What does she decide to do? Okay, what kind of a pass does she try and make out of the back? A risky pass. Yep, a risky pass. All right, why was it risky? Because it was right through the middle. Okay, right through the middle of the field. All right, right through the middle. They've got one, two, three, four players in the middle of the field. All right. There's two other options that are very, very simple. One. Okay, and even that pass would have been more simple. At three, okay, she's also got this player, but she decides to try and overhead the ball. Let me just, okay, she decides to try and overhead the ball, sorry. All right, tries to overhead, ball, not a good overhead, okay, at all, and now they've lost possession. Okay, so from, Really, really poor decision making from that player. Uh, you know, from a simple outletting position to now we got to defend the circle all of again. And that's because they took the wrong decision. They took a high risk pass in a high risk zone. Okay, so like we said, they in zone, uh, basically ball start one there. It's a high risk place. We want to play low risk hockey. All right, so just a an example of what not to do. All right, and it happens at the top. So uh, the best in the world do it. Uh, so it's and that's just an example of how we can improve. All right, so now we talk about the zones of hockey. Okay, the, 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 we've spoke, spoken about the ball start zones, and now we talk about the zones in terms of the lanes of the field. Okay, um, so on the field, we have balls as we have all our ball starts and in zone. Zone one, zone two, and zone three. Zone one, if we are playing towards the top of the field, okay, so towards these goals, zone one would be on our left hand side, okay, our reverse side. Zone two is in the middle, and zone three is on our right hand side or our forehand side, okay. Um, there is when when attacking and defending, we got to just look at two two aspects of what's going on, right? When we have the ball and when we don't have the ball. So if we have the ball, all right, and the ball is in uh, ball start naught, okay, which is down at the bottom, all right, in our circle, 
we want to get the ball safely into one or zone one or three. Okay, so now we now you understand what I'm talking about in terms of when I say zone one and three. Okay, we want to get the ball out wide. Which zone would we prefer to try and get the ball into? Zone one or zone three? Zone three because zone one is on their strong side. Okay, it's on their strong side, all right? And zone three is on our strong side. So 100%. Uh, we want to get the ball in zone three as much as we can. Uh, so ball start one and two. Okay, so now we're looking at any everything outside of the circle and obviously in our own half. All right. Again, which zones do we want to be using in this area in our own half? One and three. Okay. Very very good. Um, yeah, one and three. And and why one and three? Because it's dangerous up the middle. Okay. You're and getting attacked on in the middle. There we go. Okay. So if we lose the ball in the middle of the field, it's direct threat at goal for the, for the attacking team. Okay. So it makes, makes it a little bit more difficult for us to now defend because we need to make sure that we're breaking down play and making sure that they can't come directly at the top of the goal. You ask any forward, excuse me, they would prefer to hit the ball from zone two. So anywhere in this part of the, of the D, then trying to score from the corners no, in the D. All right, options are much higher from the top. All right, so now we get into their half. All right, so ball start uh, three and four. All right, now the opposite happens. Okay, we've just spoken about how attackers want to attack down the middle of the field. So which zone do we want to attack up in? There we go, got a message. Zone two, there we go. Okay, uh, Christine coming in with the text. Um, yeah, fantastic, zone two. All right, so obviously once the ball gets into their, their half, their opponent, opponent's half, we wanna make sure that we're now attacking and trying to go up zone two as much as possible. This isn't always easy because teams are going to obviously defend zone two as much as possible. So that's when we look to use zone uh, one and three again. And once we get into ball start four, how do we use zone one and three a lot? Forwards, you would normally, I mean, we practice this quite a lot. I'm sure you practice it. When we get into to ball start four and, and get close towards the circle, what zones and, and what kind of runs do we make? Baseline run. There we go. Okay, yeah, baseline runs. All right, so this is where, our, where and how and why our baseline runs become so effective uh, is because we try and go up uh, zone two it is blocked off in the middle of the field. So that makes means why we have to go around the back uh, or around the sides to get into the D, all right, uh, into the circle. Okay, so now uh, when we don't have the ball, um, we now need to break this down into two phases of play. So we don't have the ball, there's structured play and unstructured play. Um, can anyone give me an example of structured play without the ball? So structured defending. Okay, it happens. It happens a lot when the opponents have a sixteen, or they've they've got a sixteen at the back. What do we do straight away? Set up. Okay, we, we set up a press, correct. So that's a form of structured defending, okay, because they have their team set up, we have our team set up, and now it's a bit of a chess game, okay? That, that becomes structured. Once we move into unstructured is if there's a counterattack or it's free play um, and the ball gets loose or, or given away, and then that, that is free play. But if we just specifically talking about structured play, uh, if the ball is in ball start four, okay, so now the opposition has the ball in ball start four, uh, the role of our forwards, okay, is to obviously try and force the, the, the opposition into zone three, okay, or zone one. Uh, and why would we want them to, again, why would we want to force them into zone three? Because 
backhand? Yep, that's their backhand, correct. All right, and it's our strong side. Um, we definitely want to force them, if we, if we can't force them uh, to play straight us into the middle of the field, we want to force them into zone three because it's our strong side. Okay, and we want to, again, we kind of want to keep them away from zone two because that's the direct line of goal. Uh, so once the ball now gets lower down, if we're playing structured hockey, so the, there's a free hit or something that gets taken in this zone of the field, in this area of the field, we want to make sure that we're defending zone two. Okay, so we make sure that we get closer together in the middle of the field, all right, and force them out wide. Uh, again, we're looking to play the inter look for the interception rather than trying to make tackles, all right? But if the ball gets played into zone one or three, it should, sh it should stay there, all right? So I'm going to do just a little bit of drawing. Um, so if, we, if the ball starts, for example, over here, and the ball gets played into zone one, we want to try and keep the ball in this zone. Okay, we don't want to have the ball be able to get transferred across too easily because that means it's coming through zone two to get there. If it does get transferred, it should go all the way back out to ball start four and then go around because then we have them under control. All right, there's no threat at our goal. All right, and we're saying to them, it's okay if you go backwards with the ball, you're obviously not coming towards our goal. All right, so we want to make sure we're staying with that there. Um, if we go into ball start one and two, so now we've got the ball into our own half, okay? Um, again, we want to make sure that zone two is non-negotiable, okay? So no one comes through this zone. All right, that is, that's our golden territory. We don't want anyone coming through there as much as we can. So we want to force them into ball into zone one and zone three. Or again, if the ball gets into the zone, it should stay there. All right. We should make sure that we block it off as much as possible. Whoopsie. Um, so that the ball cannot come through into zone uh, zone two. All right. If it does go forward, it stays in that zone because we're able to apply pressure out wide a lot easier um, and use the line to defend, okay? Once the ball obviously gets back into ball start naught, okay, so now it's got all the way down. Uh, what, what defending happens uh, at ball start naught? So when do we defend our circle from a, from a, in a structured play? A long corner. Okay, long corner. All right. There's so if if the ball's sort of taken anywhere from the the twenty five. All right, we start defending our circle. But there's even one line forward that we often get free hits around. The hash marks. Yeah. Okay. We we call it the five yard line. Okay. Um, very bad drawing skills, sorry. Uh, anywhere around that five yard line, we, we are defending the circle, all right? So we need to make sure that once we are attacking to, or once we are trying to defend, we get ourselves outside of the circle, all right? So wherever the ball starts, uh, I'm gonna draw it again. If the ball starts, the ball starts over here, Okay, we need to be five, so we'll probably be around over there. As soon as that ball moves, we move ourselves outside of the circle so that we are not at any threat of the ball trying to get, if it hits our foot or anything, it's still outside the circle, it's okay. All right, it's not, we're not giving away penalty corners because that's the danger. Okay, we don't want any, any penalty corners given away or any circle entries. All right, um, is everybody with me so far? Get a nod, yeah, yeah, thumbs up. Does anybody need to stand up and shake their body loose a bit? No, good, okay. Still early morning for you guys, you're fresh. <laughs> All right, uh, okay, so now we're gonna go on to 
ball side and help side. So this, this might be a little bit new for you guys, um, but trust me, I'm sure a lot of you have seen it before. You maybe just you haven't heard uh, the principle um, yet, but yeah, you might even do, do it without even knowing. Um, okay, so ball side, help side. What is ball side? What is help side? Okay, so ball side uh, is the zone in which the ball is in. All right, so if the ball is in zone three, all right, that is ball side. Zone one would then be help side. Okay. An example of how this or, or what happens with ball side and help side, if the ball gets played in zone three, so it gets played up the field in zone three, we can see how the attacker, how the defenders shift across into zone two. Okay, so look here. We set up in normal, okay, we set up as normal because the ball may get transferred across, okay, across the field at the back. If it doesn't and it stays in ball, uh, on the ball side in zone three, all right, it moves slightly higher up in the field, our players move across, okay. Can we see how they move across into the field? They become extra support, okay, and why else do they do this? Why do they move into zone two? To protect the middle. Yes, okay. It becomes good counter cover, all right? So our counter cover uh, gets in place, all right? So if the player had to lose the ball in zone three on our halfway line, all right, what are our, what are our defending principles? What do we want to defend in our own half? Okay, we want to defend zone two. Okay, that's that's what we really, we don't want anybody coming in zone two. So if we're losing the ball and zone three, right, our help side has come across and now they are defending zone two for us. Okay, this is an example if the ball went the other way. Okay, which, uh, which side is ball side now? Side one. Okay, zone one. Okay, correct. And help side? Zone three. Okay, so uh, what has the left, uh, the right link and the right defender done? Okay, so there was our right link, our right defender, even our right forward. What have they done once the ball's moved? Shifted. They all shifted over. Okay, they shifted over. All right. The attackers, the forwards in this uh, example are, are nice and low. They are normally the only players that sort of have a bit of free license to run around and create opportunities um, because they want to be creating opportunities nice and high up in the field. But we want to be able to make sure that they are still over uh, towards zone, zone two if the ball is in zone one. Because if uh, someone over here was all the way up there in zone three, they're not really offering any support um, and not able to get the ball across. All right. So just want to show you a clip again. You have seen this clip. So, but again, watch the ball and the players now. So the ball is in what zone currently? If we are, sorry, we are the red team. Which I zone on the field? Zone three. Uh, okay, it would be zone three for Ireland, but it's zone, so you nearly there. Zone one, okay, for us, okay. Uh, again, I want you to look at these players. So the player running back and these players tracking back, okay. Can, we can't see anybody, okay, the camera angle doesn't show everyone, but there isn't anyone after, I'm going to just do a quick group line, okay. This side of the field, there is no one, okay. All the way, that is, this player is our right link, and that player is the right back, okay. The right half position, she's actually the one of the, the links, okay. So, as they start 
All right, they shift themselves across. We can see this player as well shifting over so that she's becoming more help, okay? We realize we win the ball, okay? So now once we see the help, the uh, ball side is now going to shift, okay? We realign. Okay, the player realigns. She sees that the ball's coming her way. She realigns. But now I want you to, as the ball is passed, watch these players over here. Okay, the, the defenders that we can see and even some of the links at some point. Watch what they do. Okay, so now the ball's been transferred. The ball uh, was in zone one. It's now in zone two. Okay, and it gets to zone three. All right, as soon as the ball's in zone three, Oopsie, sorry. Okay, the ball's now zone three. Okay, we can see all these players. So that player over there, that player over there, and the one that's just off screen to the left have all come into zone two and even into zone three. The one player out here uh, in zone one, she could possibly come a little bit over um, to make sure that she is in zone two. All right, so if I had to give her a video analysis, I would tell her, hey, listen, I would like you to come in field a little bit because if this player had to lose the ball, she is now making sure that that zone is protected. Okay, zone two is protected. Okay, once we go in, all right, we see those players are still in zone two. Even from the island perspective, okay, players that are coming back, the ball is on this side. They are defending zone two. Okay, they're trying to defend zone two as much as they can. All right, ball goes up. All right, and there it is. Uh, chat. Uh, what about one player hanging back? Catherine, did I answer your question? I was saying, because you said that, she should move into zone two, like yeah. you said. But then there was that one player at the back, so should she focus on the zone and forget? Because like there's no danger, and she's not really like the one at the corner. Yeah, you're talking about this player? No, further back. That one? Yeah, you said her to move. She should move into zone two. You said yes. like. And then I was saying, what about that player at the back since there's not really a threat? So she just like keep an eye on her and then focus on the zone more and protecting uh, that. Are you still talking about this player? Yes. Yeah, so I, I'm saying she shouldn't come 100% into zone two. Like she shouldn't run all the way here. But when she's running forward, she should try and come a little bit forward into probably not even there, uh, probably around this zone. So that she's just becoming a little, she's still an option if the ball had to go back. Uh, but she's also, if the ball is lost, she's there to defend. Does that answer your question? Yeah. No, that's the umpire. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, if you, are you talking about, there's, there's this, um, this lady, I think that's the umpire. Oh, okay. That's what I was saying. I thought that was a player. Agreed. No, 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 she, no she, that's the umpire. So she's not worried about her. Oh, okay. Um, I can't really see it. That's why. Like... <laughs> yeah. Okay, um, all right, so just to go through our uh, unstructured defensive principles. So now this is when it's free play, it's not really structured, so basically a counter attack. Uh, ball start four, okay. The players that are around the ball, uh, which are normally the forwards in this position, uh, should try and apply as much pressure on the ball as possible, okay, uh, and to, to force the ball, uh, the opposition into zone one and three okay we want to keep them wide and uh, normally they'll play into those zones anyway uh, but we like to use the lines so that we can use those two to try and get the ball um, and again zone two is critical all right so no matter what what you'll you'll see a trend from this no matter what ball start position we are in zone two should always be defended okay no matter where we go on the field um the balls in ball star three, we defend zone two, okay, non-negotiable. Um, and the players on the ball side must delay the attack, okay. So if the ball, I'm going to draw again, okay, so the ball happens to be in ball star three, uh, in zone three, okay, ball star three. The players that are around the ball, okay, 
they want to look at the delaying this player as much as possible. All right, anyone that is on the, the help side, okay, so if there's a player that was over here for whatever reason, should be tucking back towards zone two uh, so that we are able to now start creating that counter defense, okay, so that we can try and make sure zone two is covered if these players are beaten. All right, if the ball goes into ball start one, all right, two and one, which is in our own half. All right, like we've discussed, zone two, non-negotiable. We try and defend that as much as possible. Uh, force the ball wide into zone one or three. Um, and if it is in that zone, it stays in the zone. All right, we try not let it get transferred or into the middle. So the clip that I played with Naomi Van Ast just now, uh, Great Britain played, the let or didn't let them, but the ball got able to get passed into zone two pretty quickly. And with one pass, they got the ball at the top D. Okay, Great Britain had to do really well and defend nicely to get the ball out wide. But had they maybe tried to keep the how where that ball started was on the side of the field over here. Uh, if the ball, excuse me, if the ball was, the, it started over here. If they didn't allow Naomi to break infield, all right, or the pass to come through, it possibly would have led to an attack coming up down the side, okay? And that's far manageable than, far more manageable than what they had. Although they did very well, it was, you know, it required some very good defending, all right? And that obviously is, we don't always want to have to rely on very good defending, all right? If we can make it easy for ourselves, that's the best option forward. Uh, all right, and then obviously once the ball is in the D, uh, or close to the circle, we want to defend that as much as possible. All right, force the opposition wide and away from the circle. Um, defend the circle as much as possible. So step outside the circle if you can, okay? If the player is still running towards the circle, rather meet the player outside the circle than waiting for her to get into the circle. Um, yeah, because that's obviously our danger zone. Um, all right, and that's about it, guys. Um, so I think, Ronald, if we want to unmute anyone or everyone, we can have a little bit of a Q&A. Um, if there's any questions or uh, yeah, questions anyone has. Uh, wait, Kyle, one minute. I just have to go and unmute all. They should be all unmuted unless they've muted themselves again. All right, guys. So if anyone has any questions, please feel free to ask. Um, it can be anything. You can ask me to go back to a video. Uh, you can ask me to go explain something else again. If you weren't sure, if you missed something, um, yeah, please just, just give me a shout if you have any questions. No questions. Was I that good? <laughs> no questions. Sure. Okay. Um, everybody understand everything? Yeah. Yeah. Be self explanatory. Mm -hmm. Cool. Um, were there any, uh, so new terms that came up, help side and ball side, that was a new term for you guys? What, am, I, am I correct? Not really. No. Not really? Okay, that's good. Um, the ball sides, uh, the zones, have you used that before? The zones were a bit new, like the ball sides and zones. Okay, ball sides. Ball sides. Um, yeah. And, and yeah, and the ball starts... Everyone understands the obviously that the picture. I'll go quickly back to because I think this is the the best sort of idea that once we have the ball, um, everyone understands this picture, and it's it's really uh, you know a mental picture that if you can remember it. Once you are playing and you have the ball, if you are in, at the back, high risk, play low risk hockey. 
So if we had to make this image in terms of if we had the ball uh, or the risk that we take with the ball, we would flip it. Okay. Like, so the green would be we take as much risk as possible and the red would be you can take as much risk as you want. And it would be the exact opposite. So in our, our D, in our circle at the back, take as little risk as possible. And as we work our way up, you can take slightly more, slightly more, slightly more, um, and then create opportunity. So yeah, that's it, guys. Um, I hope everybody understood it and enjoyed it. Um, it was the first of hopefully a few to come. And yeah, we're gonna we're gonna walk work through it. Um, Thank you, Christine. You were awesome at your answers. <laughs> Which one is Christine? Put your hand up, Christine. I want to see. Okay. And it's a video as well. I can't see everyone. Um, awesome, Dad. Yeah, would you like maybe to uh, add some more uh, before we end the session? Andrea's gone. Andrea's Sorry, gone? Guys. I'm here. <laughs> cool. just muted. <laughs> Any questions from you, Andrea? No, no, I'm good. Awesome. Um, we have, I think Stephanie is on the line as well. Steph, did you have any? Steph Norlander, did you have any questions? No, I think that was really good. Yeah. Um, yeah, very, very inclusive and informative. Awesome. Well, thanks, guys. Like I said, um, we're definitely going to be doing some more of these. So if you have any, uh, anything that you, any topics that you really want to sort of know about or, or would love to hear about that interest you, um, let us know, um, however that may be. Um, yeah, give us a shout and say, you know, we'd love to hear, you know, get more dive in depth into short corners or some structured play. Um, so yeah, I think that's a, a cool way of us getting to give the information to you that you want to hear. Uh, but obviously there's some stuff that we've got in the pipeline and uh, for the next couple of weeks, which will be cool. Okay, well, thanks, uh, Kyle, for this. And um, yeah, let me tell everyone that it's really try to make this interactive. So if you have any questions or something you don't understand, please let Kyle or Andrew, anyone know. So uh, because I'm sure with all new information, there is something you would like to know. So don't be afraid to ask questions or type in a question. It's good that we can get discussions going about several topics we heard today. So for the future, if you have another webinar, just 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 ask uh, anything you would like to know because it's good to hear the response from you. Um, yeah, and then you know Kyle can give you an answer, Andrea or, or Steph, whoever is there. Um, well, thanks so much, uh, Kyle. I look forward to uh, uh, seeing everyone in a week or two when we have the uh, the next webinar, and we will try to in future. I'm not sure how long it will take to put these things online, so you can watch them uh, on a later later time as well um but yeah so far i wish you all a great sunday and hopefully we'll see you in a couple of weeks and hope you'll follow the our challenges i think it's important to keep engaged keep your stick and ball there uh, a couple of times a week uh, because it's important to keep keep playing and keep practicing yeah definitely Thanks, Carl, so much, everyone. Enjoy your. Thanks, uh, Doug. Uh, Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.